yes so today then i want to focus and talk about trural or however you want to pronounce it i picked the name i started with another name right but i picked this name because i wanted it to be i wanted to have url in the name because it works with urls and i wanted and i think tr the tool tr is a lot sort of uh in the same kind of spiritual functionality so that you can delete and, and, and manipulate strings with tr and this is t trural then manipulates urls so why not call it like this even if it's hard to pronounce but trural can work so and i also created this web page just yesterday it it's not really announced anywhere much yet and, and uh, there's no links to this from anywhere else except from um, from the github um, repository uh, but still the, the, so that the early days for this as well I, I created this funny little logo just because i had some time and i thought it was fun <coughs> anyway so so trural is just a little command line tool to help command if you're using the command line pretty much to help you parse urls extract pieces from the URL or update pieces in the URL and get it output. And I I plan on showing you a little bit of that today like this. So here's here's a terminal here on the right, right? So here's just an, an ordinary Linux terminal. And in this I have Trural installed. And this happens to be the very latest version that I updated recent uh, already this morning, right? It's, it's not even five days old yet, so it might also change a little bit going forward. So this is Trural. If I just run it, there's not enough input for anything because I don't I didn't give it anything. So you can do Trural-H to, to get a help, right? And this uh, help output has also changed a little bit um, already a few times. But I, and I'm sort of struggling a little bit on how to do it the best way. But anyway, you don't, you don't have to focus too much on, on the details here. I'm going to... Uh, take you through the the options a little bit the the sort of basic way to use it is to provide a url on as an argument like this http and a url just a random url for example like this and trural will output the url in, in this case of course uh, maybe not too thrilling it outputs the same one uh, but it also outputs it um after having parsed it and, and normalized it a little bit, which you can see if you, for example, if we add a path to this, uh, path to a page, right? And it will show that the same way. But um, and this URL parser is the same one that is that is used by curl and the libcurl API, of course, and it normalizes it. So if you, for example, do a dot dot section in this pa uh, path in the URL, um, that has then uh, been removed, right? So you you will see that the, the path part was removed by the dot dot thing here. So there's nothing of that left in, in the output. And you can then see, of course, also if you do one of these things, with, which is sort of um, totally pointless, right? It's, it's also removed. Or if you go crazy and add more of those, they will all be removed. So that it sort of it normalizes the the URL in the output reads the url outputs the url and uh, we can also it also does things like um, if you go um, url encoded domain it'll also um, normalize it by um, decoding it and outputting it like that right we don't need the percent 65 it outputs it outputs it as the letter e in ASCII. <coughs> so that's that's how we do it. And if you want to, if you think maybe I don't want the entire URL on, on in the output here, you actually want it to, you want to see something, the you know, part of the component, right? So, uh, sorry, um, you want a part of the URL output. So maybe you have a URL, let's change host name for, to make it fun. Uh, maybe we have another port number. We have a path to a image somewhere uh, like this, and you want to you want to you want your script, for example, you want to know which port number are you actually connecting to, and then we have this 
um, get option, which is it is what you want to get out of this, what you want to ask Truril to get for you. And it has a little bit of a crazy format, but I'll explain why. Because you can ask to get the port. That's the port number, right? So bip, it found that from the URL. You only get that output. And you can also actually add text in here if you want to port. So this is uh, the port here is sort of a variable that you get uh, that the URL sets and you can have it uh, written. <coughs> and if you don't have the port number like this, um, right, here's a uh, HTTPS URL, right? So which port number is that? The, it knows. So yes, it is 443 because that's the default port number for HTTPS. So it'll tell you that even though it wasn't actually in the URL, but it knows that it is that port number, so you get it uh, out of this anyway, which is just convenient. Then if you if you would create a, um, a URL out of something that we don't know about, you know, the crazy uh, URL scheme, we don't know anything about the crazy URL scheme, so we can't get the port number. So it's actually blank here because it doesn't know it. Of course, if, if the crazy uh, URL scheme would have a port number uh, specified in the URL, we would get it output because then we know. <coughs> okay, so, so that's just how we can work with different your, um, these component These are different components from the URL, right? And the, the URL, you, the URL is actually I think it's 10 separate components that it can set and we can get them all um, either one by one or we can ask for more of them in the same command line. So I get both the port number and the host name, right? Output there where I can select, and oh, now I just want the host name or I just want the um, path, which happens to be then the, the path in the, in the URL. And I can, of course, if I change scheme or change host that's still the same path right or you can even you know, remove port numbers or whatever and if i have ftp it's a p another port number so basically just uh, ways f to extract different parts of the url for you just a convenient thing convenience thing because it's difficult to do this parsing <laughs> my cat is going crazy behind me um so um right that that's uh, different ways to extract small parts of the of the url if if you put and also of course you can also um do it like this if you have more urls let's let's go okay first uh it also will guess on the sch URL scheme. So if you just provide a host name, it will guess what URL scheme it has. And it'll actually guess on HTTP in almost any case. So it'll guess that, well, you probably meant HTTP and then it'll output the full URL for you. And if you prefix it like this, oh, that was probably FTP and it'll add the scheme. This little guessing thing is just there because that's exactly what curl does. So that makes it work exactly like curl. Uh, because if you would do curl on a, on a command like this, it would um, think that it is an FTP and it'll treat it as an FTP. So Truril will do the same thing. But anyway, I wanted to show you. So I, I can also then uh, provide multiple URLs here. So I, I do both and it'll output both of them. And of course, I can add many here, right? So it's just, uh, I can just add any number and um, of course, I can, or I'd rather should use the proper schemes for, for them all. And maybe I wanted to get the ho uh, host name for, for those, right? So I can also then, and I wanted to show you that um, this is all, it. you provide m many URLs and the extraction operation will happen on all of them so it'll get the hosting for all of them beam one at a time and, and that is important so it basically loop through all the input urls and do the output for for each of them uh, which you can also do then if you for example you can 
we can um, I think I have a list of URLs like this Th th it's a silly thing and here's even a broken URL it's it doesn't really work so I can have this list of URLs and I can pass it to TrueRL and ask it to read the file from standard input and it'll so just output I think that's a bug actually I, th I think it, it should continue through to the next one uh, anyway uh, um, uh yeah i'll need to work on that uh, okay but anyway wh what i wanted to sh tell you that you can give it a, a url list as a file or a standard input and it'll just work on them all uh, and you can then in the same way do this um, operation on all of them uh, one by one and uh, for example extract uh, port numbers from all of them or get the scheme from all from all of them or whatever you want to do on all of the urls <coughs> basically this is different ways to pass the input and, and what to ask for output right these are that's this is sort of the <laughs> yes i have that uh, but luckily that doesn't really matter because the shell removed it so it, yeah yeah, that was just a stupid single quote mistake. But it, um, and if you're using it on Windows, you can't use single quotes. You need to do double quotes. But it doesn't matter because that's a shell thing, right? So, for 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 the tool, it it'll work. In this case, you actually don't need either. Um, so you can do path. But in this case, you'll see that, of course, none of these URLs actually set any path, but they will all default to just a slash, because that's how the parser works. It would be a little bit of a quirk, maybe, but I, it's also convenient, because then you, it always has a path, actually. Okay, so there are more parts, of course, to URLs than what I've shown you so far. So, for example, if, if we, we can um, set a user who has a password, right? Called uh, 123, because that's a very good password. And there's a host name, um, there's a port number, and, and there's a path. And we can do also you know, a, a query part, like if we want to search for something that's usually like this. Um, and a uh, URL also has a fragment part. The part that is actually local to your machine it's not never sent over the network but it's still here uh, fraggy so this is a more of a complete url right it contains more stuff um, and uh, yes I, I'll, the, I, I'll upload this afterwards so you can look at this after. If it's too fast, you can pause it and go back. Okay, I just wanted to show you that this is a more complete URL because it has more parts. And then we can get more of those different parts. So fragment, for example, being the, the fraggy part, it'll op output that, or the query part uh, in the output, that little, just that little thing from there, right? Maybe I, I, wanna, I should highlight that if you, if, you add, if you do URL encoding stuff in the URL, this little thing will, will output it URL decoded, which look at that, the percent 20 there was converted to a space because that's what URL decoding means, right? So you could do, and then it says eMagic. So um, get will automatically URL decode the little thing you ask for because usually that's what you want. If you don't want it, you can actually get it URL encoded by prefixing the component with a colon, and then you get the percent stuff still there. Um, so, yeah, that's a kind of a cool idea. Submit it as an idea in the issue tracker. It doesn't do that right now. I mean, getting the particular name, but I'll show you. Uh, you can actually get, you can actually do this. So. 
one, uh, one thing at a time. I'm still out getting things from the URL. I wanted to show you uh, this little fun thing. What if you provide a IPv6 address? Um, and I'll, I have one prepared because IPv6 addresses can be a little bit hairy. So here's another URL. It's completely legitimate, right? It's an IPv6 address here, but I, I have fiddled it up a little bit. But I have, I have added some extra zeros in here just because for the fun of it. And th this little thing here uh, is called a zone ID, which is a way to um, precise your IPv6 address. I don't want to get into that right now, but you can write an I URL like this. So uh, I just wanted to show you that if you pass this to Trural, it'll again normalize this. Look, it removed the zeros there because they're they don't need to be in the URL that actually is superfluous. And it actually changed the formatting of the zone ID like that. And, 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 and yeah, so, so then you can, of course, if you get a host here, what, what's the host in this case? The host is the IPv6 address. And I just wanted to show you that it will include the brackets here. And, uh, it, it includes the brackets so that you know that it is an IPv6 address because otherwise you cannot have brackets in, in a regular host name. So that's a one way for for the whoever uses this to know that it's actually an IPv6 address. Uh, and right, and, and that's an IPv6 address. So you can also, of course, provide a IPv4 address. Like if you want to access something local, maybe you do 120 you know, one of these regular ones. Th that, of course, works, and you can get the host out of this. And, of course, you get the IP address. Th nothing nothing is strange about this. I just wanted to show you this. So, so again, I, I showed you how it normalizes the IPv6 address. So if you provide one of these funny, uh, uh, you know, pr you can specify an IPv4 address using one number, two numbers, three numbers, or four numbers. Uh, that's a crazy thing, but you can do it. So in this case, this is a le legitimate URL, but Trural will, again, normalize this and output the four, uh, four number version of the address. Basically, just make it a little bit more sensible. So if you do, you know, if you provide this kind of address, which is a legitimate URL, it'll just convert it into the sort of more regular standard IPv4 numerical version. This particular address, of course, looks super crazy, but I just wanted to show you the point. So you can also do the th th three number version and, of course, the four number version. Um, <coughs> if, you, if you provide a um, address that doesn't work <laughs> it's still m this looks bad right it shouldn't do this uh, this should have been rejected i guess that's another bug for me to to work on um uh hear me here <laughs> here i am showing off my bugs but anyway um so these are just different ways to provide urls and get stuff but i also wanted to show you that if if we have this uh, let me do something complicated what is complicated a username with a secret uh, and we have a port number and we have a path and we have a query uh, search for me like this i need to have proper coding like that but mm, wait a minute i am um, I want to update parts of the URL, right? It's This is not really how I want it. Maybe I want to clear uh, the port number. Set the port number to nothing. Bam. Didn't work. Did not work. I have broken this. Um, it's supposed to work like this. Okay, you can you can update it, but you can set it to blank. So another bug. Are you taking notes? Uh, anyway, so 
that's uh, th this is how you update parts of the URL. So you provide the URL and that you just provide a number of sets to change parts of the URL. So you can set, you see, in this case, I have a user called user, or maybe it should be Daniel here. That's, uh, and we can see the user part, but we want to update the user um, to be Mr. Smith instead. And then it'll update the user, or you can, you know, change the host host to be silly instead and then you have that host name and you can change the port to be 443 in this case you will get it here uh, include and um, i guess this shouldn't show the 443 uh, i think it's just a it, it could actually hide it because it's the default one for hps so i guess that's another little tweak we can do but I just wanted to show you so it can update these different things then for, for the URL. And of course, uh, what I wanted to show you then is sure. And if you then provide more URLs here, it will, of course, do the same thing for uh, both. So it'll, these operations are done on every URL provided. And again, you can provide the URLs uh, on standard input or, or as a file or whatever. Um, so it just allows you to operate on the URL without actually knowing much about the URL yourself. Or, I mean, you don't have to parse it and, and update it and, and fiddle with it. It, it meant uh, the, the tool is meant to do that for you. And of course you can update all the different components except the little bug here, but the bug will be fixed by the time uh, later. Um, so yes, and again, uh, Trural, of course, it will show you a bunch of different things. And I've showed you the get part. There's also a short option for doing the gets. And you can set different components. Um, and uh, of course, I I'll show you. Of course, I also, of course, have a little dash V or version options that shows you the version of Trural, which is still at version 0.2. I called it 0 0.2 the other day just because someone wanted a tag in Git so that they could uh, do a release of it. So there's now provided builds in, in a, a range of different um, Linux distros. If you wanted to get it, there's a good chance your, your bleeding edge Linux distro has a package version. I intend to iterate pretty quickly uh, going forward. So. I should have a dot three soon and dot four and who knows. Um, anyway, uh, I, I'll, I showed you two basic things: how to get stuff, how to set stuff in the URL. Do, you can do more. You can do more things. So, th th <laughs> hold on. Uh, th this is just the beginning, right? So back again. Here's here's a URL: uh, path to a page. Uh, this is what your this is what you're using, right? And you'll get it. But hey, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna ask for it. what if you on this particular page you have a redirect, right? You have a redirect to dash dash slash dash dash slash hello uh, second. What's the URL for this? That's the URL for that. The base URL plus a redirect. And of course, you can also, it also then works with, you know, weird stuff like that. Or, and <laughs> if that is not enough for you, you can also, of course, add, I want to know what the path actually ends up like. Uh, again, wrong um, quoting. So that's the ultimate path. Or, you know, you can add, st that's the regular get thing, right? So you can still have that. You can, of course, if you if you want to, um, the more basic thing, you can also redirect, uh, sorry, redirect to, na to an absolute. <laughs> this is pretty possibly less complicated, but also if you're on this page and you redirect to an absolute URL, you, of course, you, you redirect to that. I'd, I just wanted to show you that it, it'll do the redirect correctly, sort of uh, URL-wise. Uh, 
so that's the, that's uh, just a basic redirect lil thing uh, and I showed you get set um, let's do this back so these days we a lot of sites work with lots of queries right so we do search for me and name is boring uh, and uh, whatever is here like that right here's a typical thing with a, a query part that is fairly complicated so uh, you can now <laughs> now you can fiddle with this so uh, maybe for example you have this url let's remove a little part and then you can append a query and we want to add that whatever is here boom and it, see you append the query then it's just what what is it's going to append and this is the content of what it's supposed to append to the query part and it appends it there at the end um, so, so again just uh, if you want to fiddle with a query part you don't have to understand the url you can just say i will append this it doesn't really matter what's there already i want to append this um, to the query part so if if i would remove a little bit more right it would still append that or i could also let's see if this works append yeah so whatever is there already it'll just add it boom and <coughs> Uh, and here's a so and and vice versa right what if you have, uh, have here's a okay too much information on screen so here's a pretty complicated queries query string right so search and name and whatever they are usually in this format right name equals variable or, or content like this so there's a search for me name is boring and whatever is here and uh, I don't want the name to be part of this query anymore so right so let's trim the query I want to trim I want to remove the name from there but so the name part the boring thing here was now removed I trimmed off a query that's actually contained the name and the name here is actually the left part then uh, left side of an uh, equal sign so you could then trim and you can actually do more trim so we can trim we can also remove uh, the search part for example and then we're on the and we can remove uh, uh, query whatever as well and then we have removed all the query things from from the query and then we can append a query hello no we could not <laughs> we should be able to <coughs> anyway um uh, what's that the third bug i managed to uh, run into here uh still pretty good uh, again as i said i did my first commits on this less than five days ago so i i, I still think it's pretty good uh, five days so uh, feel free to submit issues if you find anything and we can uh, do so um yeah um no well eh, you know it should it, sh it shouldn't really matter i should be able to if i want to trim something that doesn't exist if i trim you know magic it should just work because there's no magic anywhere so it won't trim anything i could show you also that this c trimming thing can also actually do with um wildcards it should remove all the ones that starts with ma right but there's nothing that matches that but so wa and wa will then match the whatever one and it'll remove it 
it actually only supports wildcard at the end so it just becomes a uh, you know matches the beginning of the keyword so if this one matches the beginning of that <coughs> this uh, in particular this is fun if you want to use this to do for example you if you've done anything on the you, you will see stuff like this everywhere where people um, add stuff to URLs like this because they want to track from where you got the link so they add UTM things on, on the query part and you can then do UTM and remove those from the URL <coughs> so that's how you can then remove things from the from the query thing from the query part uh, trim o o actually only removes things from the query part for now i figure it, i could also do uh, maybe remove stuff from the uh, path maybe i haven't really uh, figured out a good use case for that so trim is still only doing um, query uh, removals but still pretty cool i think well uh, um, you can uh, if you have uh, like this you can you don't have to trim if you want to remove everything you can just set query to nothing and i wonder if this is the bug i already show you no it works for this so uh, yeah and then so you you should be able to whatever you don't want in the url you should just set it and you should be able to clear it and it'll just go away right so if you have a user name here as well you can also set user to blank and there will, won't be any username left or you can change the username and it'll use the new one instead excellent question so i forgot about that but so yeah if you if you go with true and you know if you don't provide a, a url at all you know it doesn't have any url but what if you want to create one you want to have a host that is example.com and you want to have a scheme that is https and you want to have a path path that is uh, foobar yep that's the url for you so you can also without having any input just if you create uh, if you set enough components so that it actually can create a url it'll show that for you uh, and if you then don't provide enough information if for example if you only set a host name and a path it will complain because it doesn't really know how to make a full URL of this because it lacks the scheme. Pretty much you need a host name and a scheme um, set to be, it should probably possibly help you and tell you that. But anyway, <laughs> room for improvement. So you, so this is the, if you, it's meant of course, so if you want to create a URL, you don't actually have to know how to make a uh, URL out of these components. You just set all the components you have and it'll output the URL for you or and vice versa then. So you can split it up in components, put it back in, uh, into a URL uh, from components. <coughs> Again, the, 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 the idea here being that your scripts and your command line shouldn't really know how you parse or put the URL together you just provide components and you extract components and you get the URL as a sort of uh, intermediate format for you to transfer all that data, but you don't need to understand the URL. TrueRL will do that for you. I, I have some more tricks up the sleeve. I, I'm just going to do, uh, uh, scroll in my little um, cheat here. Cheat sheet. Cheat sheet. Okay, I wanted to show you how, um, again, Here's a, here's, a, here's a URL and I can actually I, I uh, have another append where I can append a query I, sh I showed you how to append a query but I can also append a path actually hello.html and it'll append the path like that and it'll also work if you go uh, directory here and it'll append as you can see it'll add the slash and this part and if there's no slash it'll add one which makes it a little bit crazy if you do like this because then maybe that wasn't really what you wanted but then you would you really didn't want a pen path maybe you want if you wanted this maybe you wanted um 
redirect, perhaps. Uh, so yeah, so that's how you can also append par parts to the to the path, and you can of course also then append, as I showed you before, if you you can append parts things to the query as well. Search for me, and then you get everything uh, appended to the URL. <coughs> If if this is uh, if uh, and once you're sort of happy with how to do it, you can of course also output the everything as JSON instead of just those little things. And this JSON object, um, it, uh, it uh, you can see that it showed all the components at once. It actually also includes the URL. So the URL and all the components that are set. So there uh, there are more. There, I mean there could be more components, but these are the ones that are set. And they use the same names for the components as I already showed you for the get, for the set, for the append. So they are fixed names for them. They all use the same names all the time. So you could see this uh, going through. And as you can see, JSON-wise, this is an array, right? So you can see this is the first URL because, again, if you provide more URLs to this command line thing, As you can see here, it will iterate through all these URLs and do the actions on uh, on every URL and then output everything as JSON. Boom. Uh, so every every URL operation is output as a single URL, uh, JSON object within the array here. Then, so the point is that you of course know that if you provided three URLs, you know that the third uh, JSON object is the third URL here, right? <coughs> um, so, and, uh, I should mention them. It's not really obvious here, but if you do, um, if you do this, um, this. Uh, sorry, it, it does. It's not really. Sure. But if you read, if you if you do like this, if you remove the URLs from the command line, and you ask TrueRel to read, you can read it from a file, like this. URLs. This is how to read it from a file. There, there, there is no file right now, so it'll just say uh, there's no file. Let's create a file. We call it urls.txt and we put localhost. You know, I'm just using simple ones here just because I have a lack of imagination and it's not really the point to, to do complicated ones. Path, uh, query, typo, fragment, right? And um, an FTP one. FTP funet.fe. I think this is a re real FTP site. So now I have this file now. We can look at it. It contains this. So if I pass this file to Trural on, and I, I use this dash, read a file, dash means from standard input. And it'll, of course, then uh, normalize all the URLs and I'll put them. Like I showed you before, but I wanted to s mention then that it'll do, it'll read one at a time from standard in. So you can actually, if you have, you know, 10 bazillion URLs, you can actually pass them through Trural and it'll output them one by one. So you can use Trural as a filter. If you, for example, let's me, let me get all, I want to know the host name of, I did the same mistake again. I want to know the host names of all, you know, everything and you just keep piping uh, URLs to it uh, for a long time and it'll show them all uh, one by one or however you want to do it you can, and then you can you know someone mentioned the origin thing for example which origin is a uh, browser concept right based on the scheme host and port Now I'm not actually suggesting that we should write things as semi-looking uh, URLs because the tool here is meant to not uh, to avoid that. Or I mean, anyway, 
Um, so what else do I have up my sleeve about this thing? I believe I showed you the most sort of fun things. Yeah, uh, again, localhost. So when you provide a, a host name with no scheme, host name, this is not a real URL, right? A, year, no, a real URL doesn't look like this. A URL has a scheme. So, but first, it's not a URL. So, if you just provide a full URL, you're safe. But if you provide just a host name, then Trural will guess what kind of scheme do you want. And now, for legacy reasons, it will guess on HTTP by default, pretty much. If it cannot uh, think that it, it's something else, it'll think it's HTTP. And in, in this came, case, just a host name you probably meant HTTP, it thinks. And you, you would say, oh, why, why doesn't it say HTTPS instead? Because nowadays pretty much everything is HTTPS, so it should say HTTPS. And maybe it should, but it's this again, this uses the, the curl logic. Curl will use HTTP here, and by using the same logic, it's sort of, it's, uh, it makes it uh, no surprises, right? And it's a legacy thing, so curl has done, picked HTTP for this, for 25 years. So I don't want to change curl to do this by default. And I figured if Trural should pick anyone, any default, it makes sense to pick the same as curl. This is the same parser. So why not do the same guessing logic? It's actually using the exact same guessing logic underneath as well. <coughs> um, so, uh, and uh, the redirect thing, uh, you, uh, the question then, if, if I support re, um, scheme relative URLs, yes, uh, you should be able to to redirect to slash slash example dot com slash foo. I think this should work. Bam, meaning that it'll stick. Uh, you you don't have to. Uh, this one is schemeless, right? But it changes the host name. So just make sure that the redirect uh, changes host name, but st keeps the scheme. So if I would you do this, it, as you can see the difference here, it'll use HTTP there and HTTPS there because the original URL was different. Or if I would do FTP, it would keep the FTP. If I would use SFTP, it would use that. Uh, maybe, if, of course, <laughs> redirects will not happen on FTP or SFTP, typically. Uh, but anyway, um, so so that's that was just a little reminder about the the, the redirect thing. So I've showed you a lot of things. Uh, there are some things left that I wanted to explore a little bit, maybe. Um, Here's here's one thing. Here's uh, back again. Here's a fun u URL, or let's make up a URL that contains, for example, 2020. Again, URL encoding. Foo. This is a perfectly legitimate URL. It looks like this. Um, but you might want, for example, ah, uh, let's let's use the short version. I want to get the path out of this. But wait a minute, what's that in uh, in the path, right? It looks like this, because now the, the default thing is URL decoded. These are spaces, or we can maybe change one in the middle to do something, make it an A. So it, it'll, um, which is, this is maybe fun. I think maybe it's more complicated if you had a space in the end. Because it's not now. Now it's <laughs> less <laughs> obvious. So, where does the path actually end in the output? So maybe then you want to have something on the other side so to show you. Maybe that, or you can go with what I showed you briefly before by adding a colon here. You're asking Trural to keep the URL encoded version because I want to get that as a string. Maybe uh, maybe just pass it on somewhere. Um, so it'll work like that. So 
easier maybe to to work with in some ways i i, I don't know it depends on what, what you want to do with this um no spaces should not be plus unless they're part of the query so if you would go hello so then you would ask uh, you would get the query part you would get it as a number uh, of spaces because the query part is different for some reason so, um, so then they use pluses for space so you could here and here again then you see there or you can go colon prefixed and you get it the URL encoded version and that also works similarly if you want to set the query part like let's let's do this the, we have a query part but i want to change it and this is a short version so i can set the query part query to hello right and it'll just replace it with a hello that's fine but what if i one one if i wanted to add spaces right so i could do hello again and you, here you can see that it actually then encoded these spaces into pluses right and again part of that's part of the query and if you would set uh, that part of instead set the path mm, you would get percent twenties there instead because that's how you encode that part again uh, you don't have to care about that so so that's the point of the tool right so uh, you don't actually have to care about how to encode that because the tool will do it for you what i wanted to show you is what if what if this what if you want for example you want to set the query to hello um like that uh, but uh, maybe you already have an, a url encoded query that you want to set and here, uh, so so you want to pass maybe you know, like this. And if you would do this, um, like this, what happen? What will happen then is that Trural will URL encode this part and replace the query part, right? So it'll look like this. Maybe not what you wanted, right? So the the equal sign here becomes a three D, and the twenty twenty here. The percent 20 percent 20 they become percent 25 20 percent 25 20 right because 25 is the percentage sign in ascii because it's uh, has then url encoded the entire thing right that what you pass to it maybe you don't want that and then i added this fun feature so you can do uh, tell tutorial uh, th this is good it's already url encoded it's there If you go with a tab, you have the same problem as with percent twenty. You you won't see it. So if you go with a let's 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 put a tab in the path or more many tabs like this, right? A, a completely legitimate and, and valid URL in theory, at least. I guess it rarely actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think you won't find many URLs actually looking like this in the real world, but still, they, ca they can look like this, right? And there's actually nothing that prevents you from having a directory uh, just being named with a tab in a typical Unix system. So, sure, this works. And if you then get the queer, uh, the path out of this URL decoded, what do you get? Ha! <laughs> you don't get that because um most likely because of rubbish in the input path yes so actually it will not extract I, um i haven't really decided i haven't really made up my mind on how to deal with the tabs uh, because they can be used in some cases and in some cases not so right now they actually show you error but you can actually get the url encoded version instead that works i need to maybe not treat 
tab slab. I think it's pretty much it, it is intended to you know prevent you from doing this pretty much because if these are binary zeros you can have them in a URL but you really cannot extract them because nothing nothing can handle these also there's a potential for if, if you go with like this these ones crazy control code ones what happens if you do this they they're also then prevented from being ex uh, exported like this so you you can get them URL encoded but not decoded maybe i need to handle the tab differently i don't know i don't um, it's not a big problem but maybe we should do that so i think i've showed you the highlights of most of the stuff uh, there are some things uh, i wanted to show you i added two things recently uh, may and maybe those are reasons why i also broke some stuff uh, okay first of course um, i added verify so pretty much Trural is not is very lenient to, uh, for URLs problems, simply because so you can do this invalid uh, invalid right, so, and it actually sorry typo Daniel and you can actually it actually it actually returns an error there, <coughs> but um the point was that I wanted it to hello and a set the scheme to HTTPS it actually works then so it you give it a bad URL but you can still update it and in the end it um, becomes a real ur uh, URL because you set the correct right it couldn't parse anything but you set it so that means that you can for example provide another URL here right that local local that works and it'll do the same thing on both both of them right in this case silly ones because they end up identical but still if you would have a path here that would survive um, so it's it doesn't ex uh, exit just because you provided a bad URL here it'll do the operations on the bad URL but so I I added this option so you can do verify and actually provide a bad URL and it'll output an error if it is bad and if it's okay it should just do the, do the right thing and uh, return a zero maybe it shouldn't even output anything if you just ask for verify meant to allow you to just check is this actually a valid URL or not uh, and I mean shell script wise and, and then just use the return code exit code to know if it did that or not uh, I did another little thing just the other day that's also uh, maybe uh, it's a little bit of an adventurous thing because uh, uh, bear with me here people do this people go to their URL uh, uh, bar for example in a maybe in a browser and they copy something from there and you get a URL back that might look like this right with this has spaces and if you and of course we use quotes around it so that it'll treat it as a single argument no this is a bad path this has space blah 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 doesn't really work and um, because there are spaces there and and according to the rfc 3986 you can't have spaces in urls so the parser will say no 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 obviously you have sort of not understood something here because there are spaces here we can't have that uh, and yes browsers think you can have spaces in urls so browsers sometimes let you get away with this and that sort of taints the world outside browsers because people will bring that kind of urls into non-browser urls and do this and say hey there's a bug here uh, uh, why why doesn't it support this and then i i, I added accept space what did i use singular or plural singular 
So if you do this, it'll actually accept spaces in the URL. I know it's, uh, it's sort of opening up for all sorts of weird, crazy stuff, but it's a little bit of a experiment for now. So actually, if it now finds a, a space in here, it'll actually URL encode that part. So the it'll URL encode the path here for, for you. Sort of try to extract it, URL encode it, go on. But I mean, this is a little bit of a sort of a best effort because strictly speaking, it's not a URL if it has a space, right? Because a space is not part of URL. It cannot be there. But this is more, yes, it's there anyway. Go ahead and do something with it. And it then tries to actually, okay, let's pretend I can do something and, and try it out and it might work. It might work. It might do it's some, there are some caveats. I mean, it might not always do exactly the right thing, but it, it's, it's an effort to actually go ahead and do it. And if you, if you do accept spaces, you can then do things. I mean, all the other things then work exactly the same as before. So you can, yeah, yeah, you can get the path out of this, right? And then you get the URL decoded path, or you can get the URL encoded path like that just like before so this is just a, a sort of a qualifier that says my urls can have spaces and i accept that and i provide this option um, to allow, allow trural to try to work around it i really wouldn't recommend it as a sort of default option because it's it's not i don't think it's totally safe it's it's crazy so don't go crazy so I think that was pretty much... Did I forget any important thing, option? I showed you accept space. I showed you append. You can append data to a path, to a query. I showed you, you can read files from a URL and from standard input. It basically, it's the same thing, really, just different sources. Um, you can get, which is then showing different components from the URL or from a number of URLs. This help text I've shown you a number of times. There are, there's a short version and a long version to ask for help. I showed you the JSON output. There's a bug file for the JSON output just recently, so it doesn't. There, there's some bugs to fix. I showed you redirects a number of times. You can redirect to a new URL. I showed you how to set components. And setting components is is a good idea if you want to update a component or if you want to erase it completely because you can set it to a blank, right? So you can set the port number to a blank, the path to a blank, the fragment to a blank or whatever, and it'll uh, remove it or it'll be an empty one. So it's also a way to set or remove the component. And I showed you how to do a trim uh, of a query part. You can only trim queries. Right now it says trim a component, which is eh, open-ended because I want it to be allowed to trim other things, but right now you can only trim components. Um, and uh, I showed you, as I, I, was, I think every example I've showed you now uses, I used like this, just, you know, show you a, a URL, but you can actually provide a URL option as well, and it'll do the same. Move. I just made a shortcut so that if, if it isn't an option, it'll, it'll think of it as a URL, um, similar to how curl works on the command line. I showed you trural, trural uh, dash v shows the version number of trural. It's very low so far. I'm going to bump it soon again because I've added a bunch of things since the 0 0.2. This also shows the libcurl version because I think the libcurl version is relevant in this case because the libcurl is the parser of the URL here, right? I already found at least one bug in, in curl thanks to me playing with this. So it's pretty handy and it's good to know that if there's particular bugs, that might be because of the curl version and not because of the tutorial version. Um. So yeah, uh, and then yes, and I showed you the verify thing. It could possibly shut up more and just tell you, uh, just return. Was it okay? Was it not okay? Um, so I think 
that's the end of my Trural demonstration. I back again. I this is the web page then so curl.se slash trural is the URL you can see here at the top. Uh, I, I made it um, available just yesterday so it's brand new and it's just the beginning and you can go there and here on the right side you can see a link back to the github repo and you can read the man page here. The man page then rendered uh, on here. It is actually updated from the, from the git uh, repo then so whenever we update the, the repo it will update the man page here there's a bunch of examples there's uh, yeah and again if you find any problems of course uh, file issues and report them and if you go to the github repo you you'll see this which uh, yeah all the code you can see oh, at 91 91 commits by now a bunch of people have helped out really good to see uh, good participation uh, we have six pending issues no pending pull requests things are moving along so it's early days we have not we're not even five days old yet things might change uh, i showed you a bunch of things that also w were a little buggy so far but i think we're going to get a good chance to to polish them going forward if we go to this uh, discussion item i called it version 0 0.2 you can see that um, it is now provided in a bunch of different uh, repositories for different uh, linux distros and home homebrew so all of these people have mentioned links here so if you're curious if you want to get a binary version if you don't want to build it yourself uh, go there and you can probably find it for for your distro at least for a lot of distros maybe not yours but hey i wanted to also just show you this little thing so um back to the terminal i um let's uh, so that's uh, that's end of my little uh, little spiel for how to use it so i, I switch terminal here so here's the actual git repository here's the git log i added more test cases uh, one and a half hours ago now now if you run make test you can see that it actually verifies 46 different command lines and make sure that it, the output is fine I, i'm going to add more test cases because there's a lot of more more to add and obviously i found some issues today so maybe i should add uh, test cases for those and sh and by all means help me out and, and write more command lines into the test case the test cases are just a command line and expected output so command line output command line output command line output and a bunch of them to make sure that we actually all of them actually do what we think they should do uh, anyway i just wanted to make show you how how do you build if you clone trural from git hub you know you do this git clone i don't think i have it in in my command history but and then you build it and it's it is this hard to build it bam done and then you can make test to check it out and it's there in the same uh, directory there's a man page you can view it with man dash l a true rule dot one and here's the man page this is the documentation uh, i think it's pretty up to date should work should be accurate i think there's possibly more to say in the man page i'm going to try to make sure to expand that as well so that it's understandable and also since it gets uh, rendered on the website that's sort of a, we can refer people or any user to this man page uh, either the man page you can do man on or on the web page so it's a fixed url on, on the website as well so that's what i wanted to show you it's a, still a small project not a lot of things here's a stupid uh, urls file and yeah, that's just for my testing so you can see that the c file is still below 20k how many lines is there you th you ask or maybe you didn't ask uh, but it's so still a small thing still lots of features still some bugs still some other things to do and work with and tr uh, give uh, give me and us your feedback input thoughts ideas questions whatever either you know just 
ping me wherever but do do preferably use the github repo because there's a lot of people that are already helping out having ideas proposing providing pull requests you can see there 14 people already we're five days in i'm, I'm not doing this alone there's a there's a team of people there uh, interested in, in making sure that this works so uh, go there and and submit your stuff and uh, let's make this a useful little tool and again it's uh, it's supposed to be focused on this use case right parse urls get the components set the components and work with urls let's not get overboard right and we don't do anything else we just stick to those urls functionalities and we want to transfer those URLs, we go over to curl. And that's, uh, I think that could be a really handy couple to use Trural and curl in combination when you want to write your f uh, scripts to do whatever you want to do. 